Hi guys, Matt Fall here, President at Ready. I'm really excited to talk to you today about the vertical tillage coulter attachment. In fact, I've got Jack here, who actually was one of the original creators of this product at Fargo Products, the company that he used to lead back in the late 90s. Tell us a little bit about why you came up with a vertical tillage coulter to begin with, and what are the unique differences between those out there? All right, today, Matt, we were in a wet weather pattern and people needed to get in the fields and they were having trouble with their drills and planters. And so there was a desire to go out with something that would dry out the soil, but not till the soil, not do a cultivation or a disking. And they just wanted to do something to, to size the residue and to fluff up the soil so it dries out so they could get in it. And frequently they'd do that one day and they could be in the field the next day. So it was very effective for that. So there's something that's very uniquely different than anything else I've seen out here, and that's this offset design. What is going on there? What is the thinking behind that, and how does it work? We learned, we learned from a drill we created that when the discs are running exactly alongside of each other, they have a tendency to pick up clumps of especially wet soil or rocks or whatever. So we believe by offsetting them some, we can reduce that tendency of the disc to do that. So we have about a, about a three inch offset in these, where one disc does run ahead of the other. Um, another advantage of that, every other design out there, they're straight across, and a lot of them just have a common shaft. We have a unique spindle for each one, so each unit is completely independent of the other. If you have a problem with one, you can simply remove it until you get it repaired, and you're, you're not losing a, the whole set, you're losing only one. Now, you talked about having a problem with one. What is the likelihood of a, of a hub going bad or what have you seen in the last 20 years of this product being out there of durability and longevity and parts being needed to service this item? We have, a, we have a really good long history with this particular bearing assembly. As a matter of fact, we started out with what's more conventional where we have a spindle with two bearings in, in, a, in a triple lip seal. And we actually ran into problems with that early on and ended up replacing all of those <clears throat> with the current bearing style. Okay. And the thing that's unique about this bearing, number one, if you'll notice, it's, it's got two of the same size bearings in it. Instead of a typical Timken bearing set where you have a large bearing and a smaller bearing on the inside, we have the same size bearings on both sides. Then we have a unique seal system where the one retainer actually presses onto the shaft and that helps eliminate winding with residue, pieces of twine, whatever debris might be in the field and it protects that seal surface now at the same time there's another retainer pressed into the hub and there's a v-seal that rides between that and so you can grease it until you can see grease and you can see there's grease appearing here and not damage a seal with a lot of the seals if you grease them until you see grease you push the seal out of the out of the the hub and no longer will protect the bearing so it's a very unique uh, seal system uh, there's one vertical tillage machine out there, I won't remain nameless, but you're supposed to grease the, the coulters every day or every other day. Um, we ask you to grease these before you start the season until you see grease, and you're good for that year. And then grease them again before you start the following season. Now I see two different discs on this display. What's going on there? Okay, you have your choice. We have an eight wave coulter on, on this side. This side we have a 13 wave coulter. And it depends on what your priority is. If you want to, if you want to dry out the soil, if that's when you want to move a lot of soil, that your your main focus is to get get the soil dried out so that you can get in the field. I would put the eight wave on. If you've got a lot of residue, a real trashy field, a lot of residue to size, I'd probably put the thirteen wave on because it's going to be more aggressive at cutting, not quite as aggressive as moving soil. So that's the choices that you have to make. Excellent. So the most common shank angle out there is. 50 degrees, correct? 50 degree, yeah. What happens if a guy's got a 47 degree or some other angle? Okay, you'll see this is designed so that the discs run parallel when it's at, when it's on, on a 50 degree shank. Some other shank angles are 47, 49. Uh, if you encounter that, you simply have to put a couple flat washers between the shank and the, and the mount to level it when you're putting it on the machine. Now one of the complaints I've heard from competitor units is that their mount does not stay straight or true on the shank. What's this do to, to accommodate or to solve that problem? Okay, like I said, that's a problem because if it doesn't stare square to the shank, uh, if this unit hits a rock and the bolts are, are free or don't hold it true, this will kick up and this side will be running shallower on this side until you hit a rock on this side and it can walk on the shank and loosen the bolts and cause all kinds of trouble. Mm -hmm. On this one, we actually capture the shank with the sides of, the, of our bracket 
So that you're not relying on the bolts to hold it true, you're just relying on the bolts to hold it on. We really feel this is the best value in the vertical tillage, Matt, because we have kept our price competitive with the lowest price competitors that are out there, regardless of their design. And our design is going to cost more money than any of the competitors that are out there because we do have the separate spindles for every disc. To manufacture. Yeah. So, right. But it doesn't so cost the farmer more money. Correct. So we're, we're doing everything we can to give the farmer the best value for their money. But don't take our word for it. Let's hear from some of our customers who have first-hand experience with this product. Grandparents moved here in 1909. Been in the family ever since. I'm in the middle of that five generations. And the, and the gals at the uh, probe shack in the elevators like that up there. That's why I put it there. Now we farm around 3,000 acres of cropland and wheat and oats and millet and corn and sunflowers and soybeans. Something for everybody to eat. Now we bought those uh, culverts last year because we rented uh, some land, quite a bit of land that had sunflower stubble on it and we knew our drill wouldn't get through that. We had our own sunflower stubble but this was a lot more. It was like, well, how, what are we going to do with this sunflower stubble? No, it wasn't stubble, it was standing sunflowers because they the disease, you couldn't harvest them. Well, we can't disc the, all these fields because that's, don't want to work it that much, don't want to till that much. You just want to break up those stalks. We looked at all of them online, you know, and how their construction is. Well, I was immediately impressed with yours. Just built heavier, uh, better bearings, better seals. And so we discussed the features, uh, needs of ours, made the purchase. They were here in a couple of days, and put them on and went to work. So one pass would knock them down and break some of them up, but not enough to get through with the cedar. So then you go back again, diagonally, and that would really slice and dice. Works pretty good on corn too. Uh, unless the residue is real heavy, then you need to go over it twice. And then sometimes it isn't quite enough. Perhaps uh, a little more weight on our machine would keep it down there so that it would slice and dice a little better. Well, this old chisel plow, it had been parked in the weeds for a few years, quite a few years. I think my dad bought it in uh, like 72. Oh, it chiseled a lot of acres till in the late 90s when it got parked for uh, more no-till type work, machinery, you know. So it had been parked for about 20 years. Well, it, it almost went to the scrapyard. It's like, gosh, you can't throw that away. You just might need it someday. <laughs> and sure enough, now this idea came along and it got a new life. Well, and then they thought of that little safety thing there to hold the hubcap on. This hubcap would easily get broken or knocked off by rocks, perhaps, maybe even stocks. So they put this keeper on here, hold that hubcap on. Yeah, we have other options. We have a disc, but a disc aerates the soil a lot more because it's throwing dirt. There's no need to do that. You may need that moisture later on. You want to keep all the moisture you can, but uh, you do have to manage the stalks too. So I think those. Uh, those big vertical tillage machines, I'm sure they've got their place. They seem to be the hot ticket nowadays, various manufacturers. But as far as I'm concerned, they do too much. Too much tillage. They're very expensive, of course. You run into those uh, standing sunflowers and that's going to be hard on the front of the tractor, the grill and the paint on the front and whatever. You know, a couple hours later, we had this little thing. You're driving eight miles an hour, you know, boy, it's quite a storm up here. Junk flying all over. You drive as fast as you can stay in the seat. We tried faster, but it can't stay in the seat. 
If you're interested to convert your old chisel plow into a highly effective residue management tool, contact us today. Like and subscribe to keep up with our new content every week. And until next time, God bless and thank you for helping us keep farmers farming.